everyone, this is Sage Valentine, aka Etherblade, and this is my review of The Red Road, Season 1, Episode 4, The Bad Weapons. Okay. Um, Harold Jensen um, is visiting his wife, Jean, who's still in the mental hospital after what she did. They basically had to, if you really weren't um, with us last week, they had to admit her into the hospital because of not only the aftermath of hitting the little boy from the Lenape tribe reservation, but because she still, to this day, is not over the fact that her twin brother, Brian, died. She says that she feels different and she feels better. And, um... She sees the stress in Harold's face, and she's like, you look older, like, you, you, you look stressed. And um, Harold was like, well, if you had to deal with Rachel, who's on lockdown, and Kate, who's an angel, you wouldn't look too young either. <laughs> That's the way I interpreted it. A lot is going on with the court case of the college kid, you know, the boy that um, supposedly Mike Parker killed and put him in the water. Um, Harold tells, he that's basically what he's talking to Jean about. Harold says, I missed you. And Jean says, me too. Now, I interpreted that as, um, Jean saying that she misses her old self. I did not see it as Jean saying, well, I miss you too, Harold. Like, she literally is talking about herself in that scene. They kiss, and then you go up to Marie, who's talking to her brother, and they're talking something about some type of petition, trying to get other people from the Lenape village to, you know, make statements and get the ball rolling. I believe they're talking about Jean um, hitting that boy, and they think that it's just going to be pushed under the rug since the since Harold Jensen works for the sheriff's department. Um, the news comes on, and they find out that there was an armed robbery of the Metascripts truck. And they are saying that there's no connection between that and the robbery at the nursing home, nursing home. But even before they reveal who it is, I already know it's Phil and um, Mike. Junior is in the um, room, so I know Junior is not a part of it, but it was definitely Phil and Mike. And we find out later that they're in a, um, inside of the truck and Phil's on the top and he pours gasoline. And Mike pours gasoline on the inside. And even before that, they were gathering up bottles of pills and they were putting them in garbage bags and everything, so they're looking for something. But um, Mike asks, how come you didn't bring Junior with us? And Phil is like, listen, Junior's too smart. In other words, Junior would start asking questions. Junior would understand what the hell's going on. So once everything is, like, doused in gasoline, Phil throws a flare and poof, everything goes up. <clears throat> Junior's at school. Um, he is standing outside of Rachel's classroom. Rachel Jensen, daughter of Jean, Harold, and sister of Kate Jensen. <coughs> oh, that's horrible. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Rachel's still upset about what he said to her. He called her a spoiled little white girl um, the end of last episode when they were, like, all uh, together in the hotel room. And, um... Rachel wants to hang out with him, but he has to basically has she wants him to get away from Mike and Phil. Um, but he says to her to reassure her, like, I would never let anything bad happen to you, but she counters back, listen, um, my mother doesn't like me hanging out with um you and she found out that um Jean's brother Brian knew Phil Copus, Phil. So, um, she doesn't want to hurt her mother in any way. I can understand that, though. Um, Junior walks away. Like, he's over, so he walks away. Marie's brother calls in a tip with someone who knows the brother of the DEA, and I'm not sure what the tip is, but I'm assuming it has to do with Jean hitting that, um... Did I say Jean's brother or Marie's brother? Jean, um, hitting the little, um, Lenape boy. Um... Harold pulls over Junior in an ATV, he claims it's because he doesn't have a helmet on, but secretly he's asking, you know, if you've, or do you hang out with Philip and Mike? And he's like being all cagey about it. So then he says, he mentions a robbery at the nursing home and Junior's like, I don't know anything about it, but Harold is the wiser. Harold knows, listen, this kid was involved in this. And Junior denies it. And he says, you know, if Philip is using you and if you want to snitch, this is the way I interpret what he said, if you want to snitch... 
come and see me. But he doesn't say come to see me, but that's basically what he means. But if Junior snitches on Phil, Phil may come and kill him. As you, if you've watched the episode, I'm getting to it, but you know what I'm talking about. Phil may try to kill Junior if Junior tells on him. Um, he says, you know, you're getting in over your head. And Junior's like, listen, I thought you didn't like me. He said, I might not like you, but it doesn't mean that I want to clean your brains off the road. Rachel asks Jean, because Rachel's visiting Jean, and she asks her about Brian and... Gene explains that they were twins, and Brian recorded everything that he said because he didn't trust his own memory. Um, Jean says she dated someone else, but she only thinks of Harold. She dated Phil Copas. That I know from the previous episodes. Hopefully in the later episodes, they basically go back to that flashback to that, mention it in some way so we can learn and learn and find out about that one, so... She said that Brian was quirky and Harold was a guy's guy. Um, she said, having a twin, you never feel alone. She feels like Rachel being with Junior was a betrayal to her because of... She's still holding on to this whole belief that Philip Cope has got um, her brother Brian killed. Because um, Phil basically, from what she says, Philip got her brother high made him swim and her brother drowned. Which I'm sure there's another side of the story, but this is what Jean is saying. Um, she said that like her brother was in danger, but she didn't know it by hanging with the wrong people. Um, Junior mentions Harold talking to him to Phil. And Mike is there. He said they are in a cave. A couple, a couple hundred pill bottles are pouring them all out. Those are the bottles that, pill and, that Phil and Mike had. Um, they're searching for a specific prescription. Meanwhile, Junior's taking, like, a couple... Every time he sees, like, every couple bottles, he's, like, taking them and hiding them under his legs. And I'm wondering, like, at this point, I'm like, is he looking for evidence? Like, what is he doing? So, he also takes the list that Philip showed him, and he's hiding that as well. Harold gets a call from Phil, who is upset that he is in his way. Um, and basically, Phil blacks, blackmails him by saying, listen, if anything happens to me or my friends then your wife is going to jail. Uh, Harold sees, like, Harold makes it back to work, and he sees these cops all running out, running out. He finds out that the DEA is there, and they are in a mad pursuit for this squatter house, according to the chief, and whoever lives at the squatter house is involved in this whole robbery thing. I'm saying Phil, Mike. So, um, Phil found some pill bottles while Phil is like at Mike's house and he's like looking at something he sees the trash can and stupid Mike has a bag of pills like hidden in the trash can like it's like a garbage bag and um Harold rushes to warn Philip about the DEA tip and he tells him to hit him now the thing that I don't understand with Harold right Harold is kind of caught between two worlds but eventually all this is going to catch up with him because he can't keep lying to, you know, the DEA. And in, and in this episode, it definitely does catch up with him. But I'm going, I'm way ahead of myself. So, um, the DEA, they come down, they're chasing Phil. And then they chase him one way, Phil hides in the trench. And then they're running this opposite direction. And as they're running, one of the DEA agents injures his leg. And I think I missed that part, but I think I'm wondering, did... Harold set a trap or did Harold do something so that man would fall so he wouldn't catch Phil Harold gives a false statement to the DEA agents to cover his wife and it's like you could tell that the agents like going along with it but he's seeing the holes because there are constant holes in this whole statement and I'm wondering like why does he think these people are going to listen to him because they're not going to listen to him they're not going to see this but anyway um Junior comes home to see Marie, and he tells her he found cancer pills. He basically wants her to take these pills because she hasn't filled her prescription because Jean has, I think, breast cancer. And um, I believe it's breast cancer. If I'm wrong, then uh, definitely let me know in the comments. But um, she has breast cancer, and uh, Marie doesn't want to take the pills and everything. He's like, listen, he's like, I need you. Marie, just take the pills. So... The head psychiatrist at the um, 
Mental Hospital, mentions that Jean's been schizophrenic since right, be right before Rachel was born. Harold doesn't want to believe this as they're sitting in that office. Um, he's just like, no, this didn't happen. Meanwhile, Jean is just like, listen, she was like, Harold's like, I want a second opinion. Jean's like, no, 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 he's right. Just keep going. She just wants to get to the pills that they're going to give her to calm all these voices and things in her head down. Honestly, I don't think they're going to be that calm um, until she truly faces what happens. I think eventually she's going to end up hearing these voices again. But um, the doctor basically said that she's clear to go home with medication. And like the look on Harold's face is just like, what? Like, I'm not ready for her to come home. And because having Jean home is like a big mess. Because you don't know if Jean's going to take those pills or not. Is she going to have another attack? Because she might take those pills and still hear those voices. You never know. So, Marie comes home and sees Phil showering. Okay. Um, Marie apparently kicked him out of the house as a kid. And she says, you know, Junior's a good kid. He doesn't have to turn out like you. And it really seems to bristle Phil. And, um... Phil is still stuck on this whole question. How come you didn't visit me when I was in prison? She said, I didn't know you were in jail, but when I found out and I found out you were in prison, I was just too mad. So they had this fractured relationship. Um, Kate wonders what Brian, uh, her uncle, sounded like. And um, Rachel lets her hear it. But then she kind of questions, like, is, are you sure that's Brian? And Rachel's like, yeah, it is. He said his name is Brian. So Brian, they're listening to the tape, and Brian's mentioning Harold. It says something about Harold doesn't talk to me anymore. Then the door is about to open and they hide the tapes. Gina's home. Harold looks worried. Like, what's she going to do? And I'm wondering, what is Harold's role in this whole thing? Did Harold, Harold have anything to do with Brian's death? Because that's the way it's looking to me, like Harold had something to do with it. Junior's selling drugs with Mike at some college party. And... Mike mentioned something about Phil wanting him to step up and he hasn't learned how to use a gun. Phil never said this. And um, he says you have to, you know, be prepared to, you know, carry a gun. And he mentioned something about the NYU kids and that's why I had to kill... I don't know if he comes out and says that's why he had to kill the boy, but he mentions that's why I had to kill him. And, um... The scene goes on to a knock at Hector at a Harold's door, and there's two detectives, and the detectives are just over it. They're wondering why Harold didn't book Mike Parker when he had him. Well, we know he didn't because he has that deal with Phil. But they're like, we don't have an address on him. You're not going to, considering that he lived in the squatter house. But we don't have an address on him. And basically, like, trying to compare their politics as being big city cops to small town politics and how stupid they are, which really they weren't because Harold's main idea was to get Mike the hell out of there before some mess popped up. So, um, they mentioned that the college kid's name is, uh, Dennis Bradley and that he scored meth from Mike Parker. The detectives pulled his file and, like I said, still pissed off that they don't have any, really any information on Mike. And, uh, and to me, it looks bad. This is yet another red flag with him because first he lied about, um, he's just, uh, for some reason, Harold's just lying. Like, he lied about the truck and he's lying about this. Like, he's just starting his whole chain of lies. So, Phil walks with Junior and Junior reveals he doesn't want to kill anyone. And, like, Phil is all upset because Junior tells him that Mike was talking about killing that boy and... Basically, Junior says, you know what, Mike is an idiot. He tells him to just tell us, um, Junior, just go back and don't tell anyone about this. And the detectives are uh, back at the police station. Because it's the way that the show goes, it just jumps from scene to scene to scene. And um, the tape recorder tapes of Brian will remain at the police station. And I'm wondering what's on them. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, if you watch episode one... The chief comes to uh, Harold and says, listen, we have these tapes. I think they'll be of use for you. I guess they're left over from Brian's, um, Brian's uh, trial or something. And to be honest, I'm wondering why does he need these tapes? Like, I know they're sentimental or whatever, but what is the purpose? Like, is there something incriminating on there? I wonder. And Phil and Mike are eating. 
in this fancy smancy restaurant with like lobster and stuff which looks really good and uh mike is about to be a father and he just he knows that he's in trouble and he i guess he gets an inkling that phil wants to kill him so Mike is like, I think Phil is driving through the woods, back through the uh, reservation, and he stops to pee. And when he stops to pee, Mike pulls out this gun. And the idiot has the same exact gun that he used to kill um, Dennis Bradley. And Phil notices that, and he's like, yours has the same damn gun. Mike reveals before he got, died, you know, your father got you arrested. He feels a bit betrayed, but he knows that he's going to die, so... Like I said, Phil realized that gun was the same one used to kill the college kid. So Phil, Mike runs and he hugs Phil. And then um, they hug for a couple minutes. And then Phil turns him around and chokes him to death. Because truthfully, Mike was a problem. And now that the cops were like getting close to Mike, he's a problem. And he put him in that trench with all that mucky, dirty uh, mud. It's that stuff that the... Uh, Hunter was talking about in, in the last episode about what it did to his skin. And Harold inquired, I wonder how many bodies are hidden under there. And Hunter didn't say anything. Rachel's listening to Brian on tape. And it's like a strange, it's like a loop about, something about life being a strange loop. And running track helps me get through, slow the loop down or something. And like I said, Phil takes his body, Mike's body, and tosses him in the mud in a trench. And that's the end. Um, a couple of things, maybe three things that I want, hopefully that will happen by the next episode. I want to know what Harold's role is in this. Because for him to make that um, deal with Mike, with a Phil, I wonder what Harold has to do with this. More importantly, I would like to know what happened to um, Brian. Like, seriously, what happened to him? And uh, I would like to also know why Phil and his mom aren't getting along. And what was the petition and deal that um, Marie was talking about? So, the episode was really good, and I really liked it. And I took some notes because I didn't want to miss anything for you guys. But thanks, guys, for tuning in. And uh, definitely stay tuned and tune in for my review of The Walking Dead um, believe in possibly crises. So, uh, if you ever want to, you know, chat, just come and, uh, tweet me at sagevalentine, twitter.com. Check out my blogs. Um, I hope you can handle it on Blogger. And, um, the truth is on WordPress. And if you have a Tumblr, definitely check out a thousand, a thousand hugs and kisses. I think it's what I'm called. A thousand hugs. Something like that. When I realize it, I just log in. I really don't pay attention to it. But when I get it straight, I'll definitely let you know. And you guys can hit me up on Tumblr. But anyway, take care. Have an awesome weekend. And take care of yourselves. And just have fun. And enjoy the beautiful day or what's left of it. And tomorrow's going to be a little bit colder. But hey, it's spring and soon it'll be summer. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye. <laughs> Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs>